Agriculture is facing unprecedented challenges in the next 40 years. As population is expected to increase from 7 billion to 9 billion, we also have an increase in expected consumption. A lot of that is driven by China. China already consumes about half of the world's pork. And you may have seen in the news this year that China had to release pork from its strategic pork reserves. So a lot of countries have uh, strategic oil reserves. China has a strategic pork reserve. And that's rising very quickly uh, with increased GDP. It's expected that in the next 40 years, we're going to have to produce as much wheat and maize as in the previous 500. At the same time, the amount of arable land in the, on the planet is decreasing on a per capita basis. In fact, only 18% of all arable land on the planet is currently not being farmed. And, and all arable land is being degraded at a very fast rate. In the last 40 years of the land that's been farmed, a third has been abandoned due to soil degradation. That's an area as large as China and India combined. If we look at the United States, a lot of the best farming regions have had the most severe soil degradation. In Iowa, native soil depth was 16 to 18 inches. We're now down to 5 and a half inches. In long-term erosion studies, 30, 50-year studies, it's found that most soil erosion happens in a handful of major events. At the same time, we're still continuing to lose 5 to 10 tons per acre per year in Iowa. And that's a common rate throughout the United States. So in one bad afternoon, in a really bad event, it's possible to lose 100 tons per acre per year. For reference, an acre inch of soil is about 165 tons. That has major effects on productivity. So while the response of topsoil depth to yield is different for different soils and different crops, it always has this characteristic shape. So generations ago, when we had really deep soil, Little bits of loss didn't have such bad effects on, on uh, productivity. And farmers who lost major amounts of, of soil could look at their yields and feel like, I haven't done so bad. And they pass on the farm to the next generation, uh, with a lot of the farmland now getting to the precipice of major declines in productivity. So we've had in the United States, with increasing technology in agriculture and biotechnology and increased use of fertilizers, uh, increased productivity at a time when soil loss has, has declined. But we're now at a stage where continued loss can no longer be overcome by increases in technology. It's critically important that we maintain the soil that we have. When we look at soil loss and how it happens, it's caused almost entirely by one activity, and that's tillage. That's plowing the soil, mixing the soil, cultivating destroying the aggregate stability of the soil. Uh, when we till the soil, it becomes about 90% uh, more erodible than when it's left alone. Tilled soil has losses that are two orders of magnitude higher than soil that doesn't get tilled. If we just start with something as simple as raindrop striking soil, when tilled soil is left uncovered, raindrops that strike it hit like hollow point bullets. There have been theories that only large raindrops actually cause uh, erosion. However, a high-speed photography has shown that even in the smallest raindrops, soil is dislodged and can be seen in the coronas, moving as much as, as three feet, and all of that shifting soil downhill. And that's just the beginning. The tillage process itself actually moves soil downhill, and the movement of soil during the tillage process uh, there's direct tillage erosion. The soil is channeled uh, without its aggregate stability into areas where it's then movable by wind and rain. One of the ironies of tillage is that it covers up the, uh, the scars of erosion. So when, when you see erosion in soil and you see rills or gullies, it's very obvious what's happened. Um, but tillage has a kind of uh, Dorian Gray effect in making the soil more susceptible to erosion and contributing directly to erosion, it also covers up the scars so that unless you get areas like this where you have very light hilltops uh, that are visible after uh, generations of, of heavy erosion, usually it's not uh, something that can be seen unless there's some rare visual cue on the, on the landscape that indicates um, 
how much tillage erosion has actually happened. The good news is that there are remedies uh, for this. Uh, No-till farming is the answer to uh, soil loss. No-till farming uh, is about half of all farming in Argentina and Brazil. It's penetrated about 30% of the United States. Water infiltration rates on soil that isn't tilled will be 20 times higher than water uh, infiltration rates in soil um, that has been tilled. On my farm in Iowa, we've increased yields by 20% above the county average. I expect this year will be more than 50% above the county average. So it is possible to have very high productivity farming systems and maintain the soil. But it takes a lot of technology to do that. <clears throat> Another possible uh, solution to the erosion problem is that when soil is moved within a landscape but hasn't left fields entirely, it's possible to redistribute soil within a field. Uh, this is a field that I bought while I was at Harvard and had uh, a history of erosion. This is a, an aerial photography from the 1930s that shows uh, the effect of erosion, it's, and it's been persistent in aerial photography since then. It's showed up in, in my yield maps here where the, the red is low yielding and the, the green are high yielding areas. Um, we have strips of, of grass that we leave in fields in low-lying areas to, to gather, uh, gather soil uh, that's being eroded off fields. And those areas tend to get silted in with the topsoil um, over time. The typical process in the Midwest is to push those areas out with bulldozers and, and keep a kind of a ditch shape. Uh, because that's the best soil in the field, we can actually gather it up and move it into areas that have been eroded. So we take it from where it has a negative value to where it has a positive value. And that's really enabled by modern technology now. So where typically uh, large construction scrapers like this, um, uh, if automated, would use uh, laser controls. Now it's possible with survey quality GPS to automate the whole process. In fact, we can auto steer the tractor, control the height of, this, of the blade on the scraper, and redistribute the soil according to a cut and fill map all automatically in a very deterministic way. Um, so while soil erosion presents one of the biggest challenges that the civilization has ever faced, and in fact has been the cause of the ends of many civilizations, there are solutions. Uh, it's going to take all the tools that we have, but we can and, and will meet the demands of the future global food need. Thank you. <laughs>